had one every year since. The Dragon Duel World Championship is more of a new thing. You didn't start having the Dragon Duel program until just a few years ago, and it gives younger duelists an uh, environment where they can play with other younger duelists and begin to learn and to, to develop their skills, both on the field and off, sportsmanship, that sort of thing, uh, with their peer group. Yeah. Instead of immediately being thrust into competition with players that are from anywhere from, I don't know, 10 to 65. Just so they don't feel threatened. And to ce help celebrate that, yeah. make sure they realize that this is absolutely serious, we decided to create an entire World Championship qualifier and World Championship just for the Dragon Duelists. And that started two years ago in Japan. Now, since then, we've seen, well, we've seen two Dragon Duel World Championship finals. And the two of them could not be more different. One of them was a completely dominating performance. And, well, actually, both of them were completely dominating. But in one, the, both players had a chance to, you know, do stuff. And the other time, not so much. Yeah. One of them was in the days of uh, Evil Swarm and Rescue Rabbit and Evil Swarm Lagia. So let's go ahead and meet our players for the third Dragon Door World Championship final. My name is Kim Chano. I'm from Hong Kong. Ivan Alvarez, the Republic of Dominicana. All right. We saw Ivan Alvarez before. He is, in fact, playing Medolce. And uh, Kim Chan Ho is back as well, and he's playing Bujujins. Interestingly enough, this is the exact same matchup that Kim Chan Ho found himself in in the first round of the knockouts. It's actually almost the exact same deck as well that he's playing against. Right down to the fire hands and ice hands. There are differences, though. Although you've seen uh, Ivan play this deck before, it's the uh, mech deck that we came up with. Because he's running Maxi Effect, effect Failure, Medolce. No, it's yeah. Medolce Effect Failure, Maxi, and then Hands Mech. And it's the same split of, I believe we talked about this before, that the 1 1 split between Maxi and Effect Failure is what lets us get those extra letters in there. And what gives Ivan Alvarez extra flexibility in the first duel. Against Bujins. Maxi isn't going to be as useful. Many of the special summons in the Bujin deck are not done by an effect that goes on the chain. Yeah. So uh, Bujin Hurume has a special effect that just adds an action you can take during your mate phase, which is special summoning her by banishing a Bujin from the graveyard. And you cannot activate Maxi in that instance. You could try to negate the summon, but there's no opportunity to play that Maxi. So he's definitely going to get sighted out. Yeah, that's probably the end going out. Um, Evan Alvarez only has one copy of a Dolce ticket. I believe the last time we saw him at Dolce's, we saw two copies of ticket, just in case the first one gets destroyed. I mean, it didn't really make that much of a difference as that stood out. Yeah, it's true. But in previous days, or well, yesterday, really, yesterday, the Dolce Ivan. ticket was a massive, massive yeah, it reason. Wasn't. It was actually Ivan. Yep. That why the Dolce was also. able to be successful, and his opponent didn't have Mystical Space Typhoon in the main deck at that point, and that's not going to be the case this time, as Kim Chan Ho does have a couple copies of Mystical Space Typhoon to begin with. Now, Ivan's actually running three copies of Mystical Space Typhoon as well. You're going to see a whole lot of spell and trap cards being destroyed in this one. And there's and nothing all that specific, though. Just getting cards out of the way so you can make some plays. And speaking of plays, it looks like we are ready. And that's a Tenki, a Bujin Carnation, a Mystical Space Typhoon, a, it's a Mirror Force, tanky. and a Zip Tenki. And even Alvarez, you can see, he's got Dolce Chateau, Messengelato, Mystical Space Typhoon, Maxi, Bottomless, Trap. So it's a good opening for both of them, really. I'd say advantage Kim Chan Ho with his ability to search his deck for yeah. Bujin Yamato. That said, he does not get to go first in this game, and Alvarez puts down an early mess in Yolato with Medolce Chateau. And there's the bottomless trap hole to stop that Yamato in his tracks, although there is a mystical space typhoon coming down. It is going to be a case of... Oh, uh, no, he's already activated one fire formation tanky. He can't go ahead and activate the other, even though the first one failed to resolve. Now, there is a Mikazuchi now in the hand as well, so that's going to be the target for the bottomless trap hole. I'm surprised that he summoned it without have to get rid of the back row. There's no need to activate it yet until the Mystical Space Typhoon comes down to destroy Medolce Chateau. 
Alvarez is able to keep his bottomless trap hole in this case. Though without the Medolce Chateau, Messenger Lotta goes back to the deck, and Alvarez is left with no monsters. Always an advantage of Medolce, you're never going to run out of monsters in your deck. That's Unless, true. of course, there is Macrocosmos or Dimensional Fissure. We haven't actually seen Macrocosmos this week. No, it's Metro been... Fisher showed up a couple times. I think the, the whole problem with Macrocosmos over Dimensional Fissure is Macrocosmos removes all cards from play, if I remember. Right. So you're looking at, yeah, monsters are going to get removed from play, but I can get those back. I can't get my Spell and Trap card back from the from the Banished zone. So. Second face down card joins Alvarez's side of the field. And Kim the Tango tanky. has the second tanky. And now Bujin Yamato is in hand. Lucky for Alvarez, the Mystical Space Typhoon was directed away from his bottomless trap hole, so he will have the opportunity to respond. Yeah, we also have a Bujinji turtle there. Turtle and Bujin carnation. Now, for people that don't really know about Bujin, yes. the whole idea of Bujin is to get one monster out and make that monster practically invincible by using turtle and rabbit to basically stop you destroying or targeting your yeah. cards. Generally, Bujin Yamato is the one monster that you want because it is the one that can set up all of that. During the end phase, it adds a card from your deck to your hand, a Bujin, and then sends one to the graveyard. Now, Bujin Yamato has fallen into a bottomless trap hole, and Mikazuchi has attacked directly. Ivan Alvarez have to be careful of the possibility of Bujin Carnation, because if he destroys Mikazuchi, and that is his goal, then Bujin Carnation suddenly becomes live. And Magellan has hit the field. There's a trap stun down there as well. Trap stun will be useful once Alvarez assembles his combos, but he needs to get there first. And Jelly is the card selected for Magellan's effect. And next turn, Alvarez will be able to begin putting his combos together. You know, for an actual, like a, like a real combo deck, like Medolce, where there's a specific combo you want, to perform as opposed to a deck like Bujin, where you're just trying to protect one monster the entire time, they kind of go at the same speed. Yeah. It's very difficult to, you know, go from, you know, okay, well, I don't have any of my common pieces, so I have to summon Magellan, and then I have to get them. It's a lot like, okay, well, I have to tanky, and now I have to summon Yamato, then I have to search, and then it still takes another turn before I get all of my protection online, so I kind of want to wait then as well. They're very similar in a way. Yeah, it's very interesting that these slow decks got past the Infernity that was being run. It is kind of interesting. I don't think it had quite as big of a presence in the Dragon Duels as it, it did. did as much, but... But both of these players defeated Infernity Duels in their semifinals, yeah. and that's why we had the third and fourth place match that we did. Bujin... Bujingi Turtle is combined with Bujin Mikazuchi. I believe that's a Susano. That is. Now, Susano can attack all monsters on the other side of the field, which is just fantastic. Turtle's detached, and now he can add a Bujin to his hand or send it to the graveyard. Jingi Crane is at to hand. That can bring Susano all the way up to 4,800. Attacks Magellan. 1,100 damage because Susano is getting the 100 boost from Tanky. Chenho is considering using the crane for extra damage, which he does. That makes his no 4800. Now it's the original attack that it doubles, isn't it? Uh, it sets the attack to double the original. Yeah. There you go, becomes double the original attack, and that means that the attack would be 4800 regardless of the boost. The boost will reapply once Crane's effect ends. 2,500 attack on a monster that can attack everything your opponent throws down 
is certainly nothing to sneeze at, especially when it's searching you more cards out of your deck each turn. Yes. It's kind of like a bigger Gear Giga yeah. Nex in that way. Bigger Gear Giga Nex with a better effect. Well, Gear Giga does have that when it's sent to the graveyard effect, which helps duels out a lot when they're running with the two Gear Gianos. Is that more useful than having the ability to be able to play your opponent's field? It depends. Depends yeah, on yeah, if you're going to clear situation. your opponent's field with Silent Otter Arc or Exiton Knight, or if you're going to clear it with Dunte Susanoo. I guess. Remain a special summon. And it appears that Alvarez has sent a max seat at the graveyard. Interesting. As if it's expecting a few more two special more summons. Summons. But personally, I can't see many more he could make. Appears that he was attempting to use it when Bujin Harume was summoned. Yes. Which we discussed earlier. You can't actually do that. It doesn't start a chain. And so, I'm going to go ahead and fix that up for you. Now with the Hume in main phase 2, is, do you think there's a reason why he didn't summon it in main phase 1 to press for extra damage? Considering that he used the crane to get in some extra damage against Magellan. If you're going to use the crane in that way, why would you not first... Oh wait. There's a set trap card there. There is. So I'm thinking, he's thinking, maybe that's Torrential Tribute? It's possible. And I don't really want to, to risk losing everything. It would be something that Virginia Turtle cannot negate. Yeah. Dolce Angele comes down for even Alvarez. And a special summons Dolce Hootcake in defense position. He's clearly prepared for the fact that his plays might not go through because of the face down card. Messing and that's why you want to put the monsters in defense at that point. It's a nice wall for your life points, especially against Susan O. And the Dolce Ticket is next. Yeah, his opponent has no way of getting rid of that Dolce Ticket at the moment. And fortunately for Alvarez, the Hoot Cake cannot be destroyed by battle, but by having a defense position, he also can't take any extra damage. That looks like it was a compulsory evacuation device, but I will just clarify that. Yes, it was. Tickets activated, and so is the effect of Ujinte Suzano. Goes ahead and grabs another Yamato. No Yamato on the field, so he can go and bring that out whenever he likes. Ujin Rume is 2100 attack points thanks to that fire formation tanky, which is actually just Cyber Dragon level at this point. He does not have the Cyber Dragon claws though. Okay. <laughs> Yamato is summoned. He we just go attacked. into battle. Susano just uh, attacked Hootcake and uh, Ivan shrugs. So does Hootcake. It's not destroyed by the battle. But Susano still gets another attack and it uses it on Messenger Lotto. Now at that point, I don't know if that's something that I would have done. It's a tough call because now he's able to go and get his Mewfield. And that's allowing it to go Mewfield. Magellan or Magellan something else. It's a great combo play, but there's still two level four monsters on the field and a compulsory evacuation device in the hand. Plenty of opportunities to block the play. And there goes down the compulsory evacuation device. No Xyz summon. And but there is a compulsory evacuation device, and in the end phase, Bujingi Hair is added to the hand and sent to the graveyard. Now I have a 
Now Alvarez has all of his combos together. And he flips the trap stun. Trap stun's going to keep that compulsory evacuation device from ruining his day. Beautiful. Self summons Magellan. Levier. The two level go. threes are combined to C7 Levier, yeah. which can get back the banished and yelling. Yep. Which can then tribute itself. Get itself. Detaches Mifu, summons Angeli. Now, ooh, maybe he's going to... I think yep. the two are going to be combined for Queen Tiaramisu right now. I also may be considering... I'm trying to count up the cards real fast to see if Excite on 9 is a yeah, play. Yeah, Excite on 9 is a play. I believe it is. Yeah, but it's only equal to... I don't think you give up your one ticket for this, though. And that is what he's thinking about. He's going to go ahead and give it a shot. Sight on night. Jingi Hare is banished to protect... Susano. Susano. And because Hirume is destroyed, Kim Chan-ho, if he wants to... Uh, she's not the board. He's not gonna though. Yeah, you can boot incarnation there. It's an interesting play. Wait. No. So no successfully attacks the Exciton Knight because the card Which count is. had been evened up. No, actually. They were on two. He's on three. And he had three. But he set Ice Hand, which takes out Bottomless Trap Hole. Now, Susano can keep attacking the hands, but I doubt that he's going to do that without... Oh, no, he does have Banished Boots and Monsters. They're just hiding underneath his graveyard. And what he can do is banish the turtle to protect Susano. Actually, no, we can't. Can we bring up Bujin Turtle real fast? Oh, of course. Uh, no. 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 So, Bujinki Hair, you can banish at any time during the turn to create a shield. Yeah, I believe it's only but one. But Turtle is one that's actually targeted. Yeah. Won't work in the damage step. Nope. So, Susano attacking into that fire hand I won't accomplish that's much. What he's just checked there. Yeah, but taking out fire hand. It's one of those things, though, that, you know, if you're not certain, but you're pretty sure you're right and that it can't be used in the damage step, maybe you don't ask for the translation there until he's made the move. Yeah. And committed to it. Now, Kim Chen Ho does have a Dark Hole in hand and a Pooch Incarnation, so he's got nothing to lose at this point. Just needs his opponent to have a monster. Preferably not Firehand if he's going to use Boots Incarnation. I've got Gelato Normal Summon. Firehand switch to attack position. And he attacks with it into the Susano. Now Ivan is on his. He had to be very, very careful with that. If his opponent had had an honest or Jingy Crane? That could have been it. Unfortunately, if there is nothing else he can do, then that is going to be it. Ice Hand. His special summon still during the battle phase. Attacks for 14. Chipping away there at Kim. 1600 follows. So that's 3000. Bringing us all to 2000 to 1500, I believe. And in main 
phase two. Ivan's taking a quick look at his extra deck to see if he wants to exceed seven something. In this case, you could actually throw out. Um, no, he's got only we. Yes, only one copy of Silent Honor Arc. Yeah. And it's Maystroke. Maystroke, yes, the Destruction Protection. Which is my favorite card. So the great thing about Maystroke in this situation is that unlike Silent Honor Arc, Silent Honor Arc could detach itself to be saved from a Dark Hole, but then he wouldn't be able to use its effect as well. You yeah. only need one Xyz material to use Maystroke's effect, and it's pretty good against Bujin decks, flipping down their monsters so that they can't be you know, aided by Honest or Crane. Does have to consider that that turtle is still in the graveyard, though. So even if we were to use my stroke's ability, there's a chance it'd be negated. Although we do have a dark hole in hand. Yep, the dark hole is there, and you could force off a material that way. And there's two dark holes, and one in each hand. One copy of DD Crow. Which at the moment doesn't help him that much. Has made it there. But if his opponent comes up with a Medolce Hoot Cake in the future to try to get back into it, could be very useful. Yeah. Buj Incarnation. Maxi. And now we can play the Maxi. And that's going to be two more cards in hand. Uh, it should be one. Really? It's one they only do it as special one substance. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But the XC summon afterwards will. No, if he makes an Xyz summon afterwards, now you have to think about it. Normally it's automatic. Mm. Looking at Yamato and Yamato. Neither monster on their own can take down my stroke. And Kim Chan Ho is now under the effect of Max C. In the end phase, he can go ahead and actually add two cards in a way. Uh, first, Bujin Hair is added to the hand and sent to the graveyard, and then a second Buj Incarnation is added to Kim Chan Ho's hand. The hair, while it didn't really last very long in his hand, is safe in the graveyard, where its effect still can be played. Which is one yeah. of the strengths of the Bujin deck, is that there are many cards that you can put in the graveyard and still get use out of them. Ooh, now Ivan's just drawn into a black corner of heaven. Could be very well, useful could be very in the useful coming turn. But again, he has to consider the fact that his opponent just added another Bujin incarnation to his hand. So even if he uses Black Horn of Heaven, on the first exit, he's summon. just drawn mind control. There can be another one as well. Mind control definitely gives you something to think about here. In his hand, he has nothing actually to use it with right now. But he goes ahead and does it. Oh, he's in this case, the to burn the turtle. His opponent doesn't know that he hasn't got any monsters in hand. Interesting. And so now Maestro is free to do its thing. Duck hole. And a rabbit. Now that's burned all of the uh, protection in the hand, doesn't it? In, but the, it? in the graveyard there. But it's all for naught if he can't actually make a play out of this. Flips it face down. Now attacks with Maestro. And sets one more card. Now, now my stroke is defenseless. Yeah. Against Mystical Space Typhoon for Blackhorn of Heaven. And then there's another Booj Incarnation. And Booj Incarnation. Mystical Space Typhoon, exactly the right card at exactly the right time for Kim Chan Ho. And he quickly XC summons. Oh, he's got to get a. I believe it's a Beast or Beast Warrior. And he gets Bujinte Suzano, Beast Warrior, which searches Yamato. And having not used his normal summon yet for the turn, well, you can do it that way too. You can activate Dark Hole yeah. and summon. You can just play all your cards. 
That's there one way goes. to do it. Go all the way, why not? You're in the finals of the Dragon Duel World Championship. And Kim Chan Ho takes game one right. of the Dragon Duel World Championship. And it's such a side. And really the turning point in that one, I think, is when uh, Ivan Alvarez decided to go for Evil Swarm Exciton Knight and destroy his own Medolce ticket instead of take a more measured approach to things with the Medolce Queen. I agree. I think he could have maybe gotten rid of one of the back row cards there and also gotten rid of the Susanoa at the same time. But it could just be that he saw that this might be his last best chance to even things out. And I don't know that he knew about Booge Incarnation at that time and just decided no. to take the chance. No, he didn't know about that at that point. Now, siding in against this matchup, Light Imprisoning Mirror. Light Imprisoning Mirror wow. is... I mean, I think he's thinking it mainly, mainly for Light Swarm, if Light yeah. Swarm is going to show up, mm -hmm. but it's still it's great against with this. Negates the effects of any Light Monster that activated on the field or in the graveyard. And that's two-thirds of the monster effects that the deck, the deck has. The last third is Bujingi Crane and Honest. And that was actually, you know, they came out in the... Uh, oh, the mirrors were in Gladiator's Assault, correct? Yes. And then later on, a few sets, there was there was Honest in Light of Destruction. And this was just around the time that the mirrors were first starting to see a lot of side deck play as a result of Dark Arm Dragon Turbo decks. Yeah. Where they were banishing all their cards, bringing them all back with Return of the Different Dimension. There were a lot of dark-based effects. But Light and Prisoning Mirror wasn't really in vogue yet. A lot of people were afraid of Light Swarm when it first came out. But many of them wrote it off as, yeah. mm, uh, but I don't play think it. that this is worth three slots in our side deck. I played it uh, when I was playing did, Gladiator Beasts. And I remember playing right after Light of Destruction came out, and I ran into a lot of people playing it. But my deck, while based on Light Monsters, had a lot of effects that activated in the hands. So you'd have three Honest in that day, and a lot of continuous effects, which are not things that Light Imprisoning Mirror can, can negate. Now, back before Honest... Uh, with Light Imprisoning Mirror. People used to play it a lot against me because I used to run a Freed the Brave Wanderer control deck. Really? Yes. I, I love Freed the Brave Wanderer. Love, Actually, that's one of my now. absolute favorites. The combo, or one of the combos that I used back when Light of Destruction came out was using Raikou to load up the graveyard and destroy one thing, like a set spell or trap card. And if there are enough light monsters in there, there's at least one because of Raikou, you can wipe out another monster with Freed the Brave Wanderer. Yeah. Excellent card, Freed. I haven't seen him in quite a long time, though. Yeah, it'd be nice to see. See him have play. Originally from Invasion of Chaos. A lot yes. of great cards from Invasion of Chaos. A lot of banned cards. Mm, not too many, comparatively speaking. This is the big one. We're not talking Legend of Blue Eyes level of cards being no. forbidden. No. And it's Dark Magician of Chaos. Yep. It's Mansion Fusion as well. Yeah. But it looks like we are just about ready to start the second game. Ivan Alvarez has the choice to go first, and he takes it, activating the Dolce Ticket, normal summoning the Dolce and Jelly, and attributing her to Special Summon. He yeah, has a pretty good opening hand. Kim Chan Ho's got a max C. You know, so uh, it's Booch Incarnation, Book of Moon, Booch Inji here. And Ivan Isaac Alvarez. Coliseum and Slow Soul Charge? Yeah, Alvarez is going to keep going. He summons the Hoot Cake in defense position and summons out the Dolce. Messenger Lotto in its acquisition and grabs Dolce Chateau. Um, not a bad start, even if you did give your opponent two extra cards. One extra card for Maxi, plus the one that it has replaced itself with, and the extra card from drawing first on the second turn. Now, he has got a choice, because there's a Mystical Space Typhoon there. He's probably going to get rid of the ticket, but he also has the Chateau to worry about. Bujin Hare, Bujingi Hare, first card up. And he's taking a look at that Book of Moon. He flips down the Messenger Lotto and attacks it. Now, let's go ahead and bring up the Dolce Chateau here. Which I think does give extra attack and defense points. Yeah. Not quite enough to save the Messenger Lotto, though. And 
Mystical Space Typhoon does, in fact, destroy the ticket. that he did it on his own attack declaration to prevent the search from an old J ticket. There's another hoot cake and a chateau in hand as well for Ivan. He did not get to bring out his UFIL from the deck though. First hoop cake still safe, but it's only going to be around until the end of this turn. It hasn't come up yet, but at the end of Alvarez's turn, Medulce and Jelly will send will uh, send the hoot cake back to the deck. So it's time. Yeah, its days are numbered, and it also doesn't have any fuel in the graveyard. Yeah. So it's not looking particularly great for Alvarez right now. We'll see what he gets in his next draw. It is a 2,000 attack monster. It's true. 2,000 attack can get you a long way. Especially with the fact that there is no... no attack boosts in Kim's hand. It's true, and he couldn't use it on the hair anyways. True. As hair is not a beast, beast not a beast warrior. Crane doesn't matter. Honest would matter if he had it. And we're back to the game. Kaiser Coliseum comes down. And it's looking like Kaiser Coliseum and a pair of face down cards. And that's Mystical Space Typhoon and the Soul Charge. Tickets back on the field because you cannot use Mystical Space Typhoon during the damage step, which is what Kim Chan Ho appeared to want to do. And he. And Ice Hand comes down on Alvarez's side of the field. Considering switching that hoop cake to attack position. And does it since it is still safe from battle. Ice Hand destroys itself on Bujigi Hair. He targets Soul Charge. Card that Kim Chan Ho was not touching previously, which was a Soul Charge. But the combo is going to continue. Fire Hand is next. Although, how much of a combo is it when you're just using one card that keeps searching the next one out of the deck? Uh, that's true. It's not really a combo. It's not a combination so it's much a as a tag team. They go hand in hand? That they do. Fire Hand does not attack. Bootcake attacks, and Mystical Space Typhoon is used against the Chateau so that hair can stay on the field. Interesting choice. And now Alvarez goes ahead and crashes the Fire Hand as well, which will send Hair to the graveyard and bring out Ice Hand. Now Alvarez has plenty of monsters in his graveyard to use with Hoot Cake, and he's going to try to get as much mileage out of it as possible. Then we're going to see another special summon from Hoot Cake. And then Alvarez is probably going to want to... Exceed someone with it, though he could just let it return. We're on the main phase two. Boot cake, banishing fire hand. Special summoning. Looks like he wants Angeli. Who wouldn't? Jelly is delicious. And that's what he goes with. Now, Alvarez has two copies of um, Dolce Chateau in his deck. And here comes the Hexy Summon. Oh, second copy of Hoot Cake. Levier is up next. Attaching right. Hootcake to summon back Firehand Fire in defense hand. position. Wow. <clears throat> There's the Chateau. And he has the second Chateau in hand. So all of them go back to the hand. Goes back to the deck. Yes. 
and because I take it, he gets to add another card to his hand. Goes with Magellan. <coughs> Magellan has a lot of value just as a 1900 attacker, but as a 1900 attacker that also acts similarly to a gadget, letting you yeah. search out another monster, and it's twice as nice. Uh, it kind of differs in gadgets that you can search any monster. It's true. It's Dolce. Gadgets did it first, though. Gadgets did do it first. Unfortunately, the gadget player was knocked out. Not, Fire not Formation literally Techie. knocked out, just out of the tournament. Brings out Bujinimato. Kim Chen Hun's in a bit of a bind. Playing the fire formation tanky makes Ice Hand live here. Fujin Harume special summoned. Yamato is normal summoned. Game two. Evil Swarm with Saiton Knight. Unfortunately, I do believe that, that will destroy Exciton Knight as well. He does get Fire Hand's effect and it destroys the Exciton Knight. Ivan Alvarez has only a pair of each hand. And we've seen both copies of Ice. Wait, what? He should have been able to destroy, should he not? We are holding pattern right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, Firehand if we can. Um, unfortunately, it's not on the field no, anymore. Well, Firehand, it has uh, two parts to its effect. The special summon part is not mandatory, actually. You can destroy, then you can special summon. Okay. This is, this is destroyed. So, in fact, the Exciton Knight is destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I said special No Ice Hand is summoned. Here goes the Messenger Lato. He had the uh, the Mew Angelic plane into Hoot Cake, into Messenger Lato. We've seen both copies of Medolce Chateau and also the Medolce ticket so far, so that means. Is there anything that he can really get? He is out of spells. It's music today. Take a quick look at uh, Messenger Delano. Messenger Delano okay. gets a Speller Trap card, um, Dolce Speller Trap card, so in theory, he could have taken a Medolce Palooza out of his deck, but the fact that it wasn't there in his deck indicates that he's taken it out and put it to the side deck. Possible. Now, Mechwift Engineer is uh, coming out. A clever play. Especially if you're thinking maybe there's going to be a dark hole on the horizon. Unless, of course, the middle chip loses in his hand. And here comes the Buj Incarnation. What are we thinking about? Goes in and plays it. Hare comes back for another round. So does Yamato. They combine to form. It's like Vigente Susano again. Yep. Oh, effect, effect is Valor. defeated by Effect Valor. Which does mean that it can't attack every monster as well. Correct. And the one monster he does attack is switched to defense position by a mech whipped engineer. Now that is a mystical space typhoon back there, so. Let's see if he falls with a bluff, or whether he just goes for Oh wait, no, he's just going He does for not. It. He summons the newly drawn Messenger Lotto, goes straight into Queen Tiramisu. 
and loads his deck back up with another Chateau and a Messenger Lotto. And that'll send both cards back to Kim Chan Ho's deck. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but 1800? 2200? Got to play it out to the end, though. This is the final. Maybe your opponent will switch something to defense position. Oh, nope. There we go. He's conceded. Nope, that is it. Yeah. More than enough damage to get the job done. And Ivan Alvarez takes game two. A better game for Ivan. That is a little more in line of what I think of when I think about the bujin Medolce matchup. Yeah. It's just a never-ending stream of cards fueled by the ticket and by the special summons from Angeli and Hoopcake. And you can't really compete with that when most of your special summoning comes from either Bujin Harume or being out of monsters and needing to play Bujin Carnation. Just normal summoning one monster after the next isn't going to get there when your opponent can tear off through his entire deck and pick out all the cards he needs at any time. Now, it was really nice to have that Met Equipped Engineer come out. Yes. Because... I didn't actually see that he had an effect failure in his hand. And he he was expecting the yeah, Susano. expecting Susano. Yeah. So he just waited for it, negated its effect, and then protected whatever it attacked. The combination of Mechwip Engineer and effect failure there, very good. If you take away Susano's ability to clear out the field by attacking everything, and then whenever they do attack, can't be destroyed, you're in business. And it proved to be too much for Kim Chan Ho to overcome in this second game. As for the side decking, I think everybody has their deck the way they like it Yeah, at they this point. They don't really do much. Make your choices. You know, I mean, you practice ahead of time, so you know what your choices are for this particular matchup. And there's not a whole lot of a reason to change from that. Just do what worked. On Kim Chan Ho's side, he probably added in that second DD Crow, and uh, the Kaiser Call seems definitely came in. We saw them last time around. Maybe even a Neo Spacing Grummo. Well, and he's probably going to double up on Vanity's Emptiness. What interests me is the creature swap in Kim Chan Ho's side deck. I'm not entirely certain what that is for. Any ideas? If he's got either Hare or Turtle that he can summon, he can swap it over to them, take their monster, kill the Hare or the Turtle, and then he's got his Hare and Turtle in his graveyard. True. Plus, they've not got much attack, so it makes sense. Also true. I wonder what matchup you'd sign that in for, though. Perhaps if you ran up against... Mm, there's... There's no. There, there's no specific matchup for it. I guess you could put it in, in the Bujin Mirror match and swap yeah. your turtle for their Yamato. So you got two Yamatos. You would have two Yamatos on your side of the field. No, you don't have a Yamato. Yeah. You only have a turtle, because that's one of the things that happens with Bujin. But Kim Chan Ho is Yumato. He's got it first turn, along with a pair of Spell of Trap cards. And in the end phase, he adds Bujin Mikazuchi to his hand. And it looks like he's got plenty of good stuff to send to the graveyard. Now, Ivan has a very good hand as it stands now. He's got his Angeli, a Magellan, a Messenger Lotto, Solemn Warning, and Ice Hand. Not too bad. We've seen Ice Hand wreak a lot of havoc at this match so far. Unfortunately, there is that Solemn Warning that's set back in that back row. But he kind of feels that it might happen and sets his ice hand instead. Smart play from Ivan Alvarez. Setting a monster in the Dolce's either means one of two things. You have a weak hand or you've got a hand. Ooh, and there goes the And in hand. this case, it's a hand. And it destroys the Vanity's Emptiness. And Vanity's Emptiness is destroyed. It's going to stop. Fire hands up next, and I don't think Kim Jano is going to continue attacking. Oh, maybe he is. He's definitely considering it. I think that would be considered, at the moment, to be a bad move. It's because he's got the opportunity to Xy summon something right now, and if he loses one of those monsters, he loses it. Though he does have a Mikazuchi hand, and a Hirame. He wouldn't be able to activate the Mikazuchi, though, if his monster's destroyed by the hand. No. Nope, he's ending his turn. He goes straight to his end phase. 
adding a hair to his hand and sending it to the graveyard, clearly preparing for the fire hand. Junior hair able to be used whenever. And Ivan Alvarez is up. Check of the Bujingi Harris text. And Ivan Alvarez is ready to proceed. He's added a Book of Moon to his hand this turn. And he summons Adolce Magellan and act, well, attempts to summon Adolce Magellan. And Solemn, Solemn Morning takes it out. Negated by Solemn Morning. Mm. It's technically not that much of a loss. He's taken out. 2,000 life points. 2,000 life points down. Kim Chan Ho knows that he needs to keep the threats at just hands. He can't let his opponent get to the Angeli. Unfortunately, Ivan actually already has an Angeli in hand. Kim Chan Ho doesn't know that, though. And Book of Moon is going to join the face down cards. Great card to have when you think your opponent is about to exceed summon. Like that. With the massive card differential, you can see Exciton Knight. And there it is. He has, however, got Solemn Warning and Black Horn of Heaven to stop that. And it's an easy call here. You take your free negation with Black Horn of Heaven. And there it is. Exciton Knight. Not that exciting. Keeping that solemn morning is going to be huge. Because from the look at... Oh, and there's the soul charge. Can, yeah, but he can accept it. The solemn morning, big play. Oh, he's letting him... Oh, he's touched. Asking for targets first. Looks like it was just going to be Yamato. But at this point, you are you really in control want. of the duel. Keep your opponent locked out. Just the Hirame and the Mikazuchi. Mikazuchi could come down okay. and just ruin things a little bit. No, again, there's the Book of Moon. Mikazuchi comes down. Hirame's next. And Mikazuchi does not have that much defense. And Kim Chen Ho is back in his extra deck. Ivan Alvarez opting not to use his Book of Moon right away to break up an Xe summon. I do believe that's because he knows what's coming. Kagasuchi is the card to hit the field this time. We talked about him a bit earlier. When he is Xe summoned, you knock the top five cards of your deck off into the graveyard. And for each Bujin card you send that way, he gets extra attack points. 2,500 is already quite considerable. But more than that, he has a second ability that lets him detach materials to protect Bujin Beast Warriors, of which he is one. Unfortunately, if he's face down, he can't use that effect. It is a continuous effect. Doesn't activate or anything. So the protection effect, in fact, the protection effects of most monsters like that, Silent Honor Arc, My Stroke, Bujinte Kagasuchi, all of those are quick effect or not quick effects, continuous effects. Yes. They wouldn't really work so well as quick effects, as that would involve you activating new cards while a chain's resolving in the middle of resolving an effect. Yeah. And that's not something that can happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! So all effects like that are continuous. They're also extremely handy. Every monster that's had an effect like that has seen some sort of competitive play. 
all the way back to the six samurai yeah who couldn't even just protect themselves they actually had to sacrifice another one of the six samurai to do their thing or the union monster spirit of the six samurai like grandmaster of the six samurai or grandmaster of the six samurai though grandmaster he couldn't protect himself he no. was always ever the card that got sent away in the case but it did notably work for uh, legendary six samurai Xi'an, so that when he was joined by Grandmaster's younger self, Kizan, Kizan often took the hit for the legendary six samurai synchro monster. Back at our yeah, match. Angeli. We have resolved Ujinte Kagasuchi's effect. It's attacked through the fire hand and protected itself. Good kick. Remove Angeli. And Ivan is off to the races. Messengelato. Who taking a messengelato for ticket? This is exactly what he wants to see. Exactly what Kim Jong Ho does not want to see. Now let's just take a look at the defense there. It's still 2,000. It's quite formidable. It'll be hard for him to get over it. Fortunately, he doesn't have a follow up for now. What he really wanted is another copy of uh, the Dolce Queen. Wasn't in the cards quite yet, though. Messengelato is destroyed, sent back to the deck by its own effect. And Medolce Ticket allows Medolce Magilin. No, not Magilin. Yes, Magilin. Medolce Magilin added to the hand. And from the look of it, and this guy's called the same. Kaiser Call seems an excellent, excellent card for Kim Chan Ho to have right there. It basically shuts off all of Alvarez's ability to do much of anything. And now he has to ponder. Ends his turn. Hoot Cake returns to the deck because of Medolce and Jelly's ability. And as a result, Ticket will trigger again for another Medolce and Jelly. Now, this is just getting around the fact that he can only summon one per turn now. The good thing about Angeli is that she takes herself off the field. So you would not do something that puts a second monster on the field. The question is, what monster would you summon that can deal with a pumped up? Kagasuchi. Pot of duality for double mystical space typhoon and fiendish chain. And he gets the fiendish chain. Space typhoons go back to the deck. Alvarez is feeling very good about the survivability of his Kagasuchi. Still with one material left. Battle phase, Kagasuchi attacks. And its attack points have been pumped up. So a little more damage than usual. It's quite a lot of damage, really. Main phase two, that's the Fiendish Chain. And Alvarez has a handful of monsters. Fiendish Chain is activated targeting Angeli, but it's not going to stop him from tributing her. Oh, no and idea. King Chan Ho cannot believe that he forgot that tributing was a cost. So even though Hoot Cake isn't going to be able to special summon anything else out of the deck, it does act as a wall, and the Angeli play there got another card out of his deck, another card closer to one of those mystical space typhoons. Fire Formation Tanky, off the top. Alvarez takes a look to see what might be coming next. Though right now, I think he's just happy at the prospect that maybe Kim Jano is going to put another monster on the field and let him back into the duel. Yeah.
he's very much considering it. Mm, maybe another big misplay. You really don't want to open up to XC stones on I'm inside of the field. No, we left it. Still shaking his head over the finish chain. And he goes ahead and ends his turn. Fiendish chain remaining meaninglessly in this case because the monster was attached. It wasn't destroyed. Yeah. It was tributed. And that's actually something that, well, at least on the uh, English and other TCG language cards, we have the problem-solving card text we've been working on for years now to make it much easier to read your cards and understand what they do and how they work. When you have a card that has a cost with our problem-solving card text, all targeting and costs will appear before a semicolon. So in this case, middle J and Jelly would be tribute this card, semicolon. And that's how you know the Phoenix Chain isn't going to stop it. It comes. Alvarez Take passes his turn. Uato has a Book of Moon attached. He looks for the turtle but can't find it. It's not there because it's two hairs. And then he realizes he may have made a mistake. Now I've got two monsters. Oh no. Alvarez has six monsters though, and they're all in his hand. You feel could bring out Hoot Cake. That gets you a rank three. Oh me feel. And what Alvarez really wants to do is somehow get two level four monsters, and for a time. People were actually running double summon, spell card yeah. double summon in their Midolce decks, exactly for situations like this, where they've got all these monsters in hand and they need to make use of them. In fact, the very first time we saw Midolce in high level competition was with, uh, I believe it's Crystal Blanc. And I, if I'm remembering correctly, he played one copy of double summon along with, I think, hands. Leave his hands the first time around. Yeah. Jason can correct me later if that's not the case. Ooh, and now we have a chateau. It's a spell card. And Alvarez is clearly displeased at the way his deck is treating him at this point. In terms of level three monsters that he could possibly summon. He only has Levier, does he not? Uh no, he's actually got a few. Oh, he's got a wind-up Zen mains. He's got double Levier. He's got two copies of MX Saber Invoker. That's another summoning effect. Oh, he has Ten Tempo of the Percussion Gin. Would be an interesting choice. mech -whipped Engineer. And that about does it. The only problem he's got right now is that he doesn't want his opponent to get one more level 4 monster. Otherwise, Gar 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 Cowboy is going to... Yeah, otherwise, end that's it. We're going to end the Dragon Door for him. He activates the Chateau. Shuffles back the one Medolce. And then adds it straight back to his hand. Now oh, he's got double Magellan, Angeli, Messenger, Hoot Cake, Ice Hand. You feel. So you're gonna get with. And Jelly, with all that stuff in hand. I think you gotta set Ice Hand here and hope. Summons V Fuel. Special Summon. Food Cake. Xe Summon. Levier. Levier in defense position. For Angeli. And Angeli is going to put up a wall. Bootcake is now in the way. Unfortunately, it may not be enough. All Alvarez needs is one more level 4 monster. And he does have a hero main hand. Flips up Yamato. 
Special summon. Banishing Crane. And that's it. Go, 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 Cowboy. Rocks if Crane. Trap Stun's not going to help out. And that does it. Yeah. A very hard fought match. Ivan Alvarez with the Clutch Kaiser Coliseum that, or sorry, Kim Chan Ho with the Clutch Kaiser Coliseum that Ivan Alvarez never really recovers from. Yeah. Drawing a string of monster after monster after monster. Definitely messed up. And Ivan. none of his mystical space typhoons, which now looking through, looking through the deck, it appears that all of the mystical space typhoons were at the bottom of the deck. He had yeah. two within the last five cards and another one not too far behind. And that's absolutely a shame. It's the last point on in all of time and space that you would want your deck to give you nothing but monsters. Yeah. But that seems to be oozing crest of corruption, the arrogant vessel of madness. Deny the seething urge to let things stun and flicker. Disrupt the sleep, the crawling princess of iron, the eternally self-destructing doll of mud. Unite, repulse, fill the earth, and know your own powerlessness. Hotter number 90!